Though crocodiles and their relatives have a negative reputation among people, most species are relatively harmless and would rather avoid people rather than confront them. The saltwater crocodile, however, is known to show aggression towards people, partly a result of its strong territoriality and is responsible for at least seven dozen attacks on people each year. The extremely powerful jaws of the saltwater crocodile are responsible for creating the strongest bite in the animal world. Reaching lengths of more than 23 feet or 6.5 meters and weighing over 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms, the saltwater crocodile is the largest reptile on the planet and is a formidable predator throughout its range. Its body is covered with oval scales, while the scutes are smaller than those of other reptiles. Juveniles are identified by pale yellow coloration, as well as black-colored patches and markings on their tail and body. Usually, they retain this coloration for several years, until they become adults. The saltwater crocodile is a highly territorial, but not at all social animal. These reptiles are not tolerant of their own kind. Typically, they do not mind females on their territory, but will fiercely drive away rival males. Saltwater crocodiles are night hunters, spending the daytime hours moving through water or sunbathing. Being cold-blooded animals, these reptiles have to constantly maintain their body temperature. When it gets too hot, they usually dive into the water, leaving their eyes and nostrils above the surface until they cool down. When the temperature is low, they climb on flat rocks and bask in the sun to warm up. They use various forms of communication, including vocalizations as well as visual and chemical signals. Meanwhile, young crocodiles usually emit chirping sounds to attract the attention of their mother or to keep members of the crash together. Like all reptiles, saltwater crocodiles reproduce via internal fertilization and females carefully look over their nests after laying a clutch of approximately 50 eggs. In addition to protecting their eggs from potential predators, females carry new hatchlings to nearby bodies of water so that they will not be harmed during that dangerous first journey and continue to protect the young for at least several months. The area of distribution covers a vast territory. They inhabit the islands of Indonesia and New Guinea, as well as the northern coasts of Australia. The crocodiles also occur along the shores of Sri Lanka and eastern India. They live in the estuaries of Southeast Asia to central Vietnam. Saltwater crocodiles can also be found in Borneo, the Philippines, Palau, Vanuatu, and the Solomon Islands. During the dry season, they most frequently occur downstream at estuaries, sometimes living in the open sea. With the approaching of the wet season, they move to freshwater bodies inhabiting swamps and rivers. Though they have few natural predators, saltwater crocodiles have been hunted for many decades by people. Their eggs and meat are eaten, and their skin is particularly valuable for use as a material for bags, shoes, and other goods. These activities have threatened the saltwater crocodile's numbers in the past, and this species has historically been considered highly vulnerable to extinction. Recent conservation efforts have allowed populations to rebound in some places, but the historic range has certainly contracted as a result of local extinction. Currently, the saltwater crocodile has complete legal protection in Australia and other places. However, it is important to further monitor saltwater crocodile population trends to ensure that the recent positive trend continues to support the recovery of this top coastal and marine predator. So, could saltwater crocodiles survive in the Nile River? The Nile is one of the world's great waterways. At 4,180 miles or 6,695 kilometers, generally regarded as the longest river in the world and among the most crucially significant natural formations in human history. Flowing northward from remote sources in the mountains of Ethiopia and Central Africa, and draining into the Mediterranean Sea. The Nile has flooded seasonally over millennia to provide life-giving fertile soils and irrigation for Egypt's people. The drainage basin of the Nile encompasses about 10% of the area of Africa. The river is home to many species of aquatic fauna and also supports hundreds of other terrestrial species that live along its banks. 
Many of the animals living in and around the Nile are feared and revered by local human residents. Ancient Egyptians would even worship some of them. The Nile crocodile is one of the most feared and revered residents of the Nile River. It is the second biggest extant reptile in the world after the saltwater crocodile. This species is found in large parts of sub-Saharan Africa and lives in lakes, rivers, and even marshlands. Occasionally, the Nile crocodile has been detected in saline water environments like brackish lakes and deltas, but is generally a freshwater species. Introducing saltwater crocodiles into the Nile would not be a good idea. It could have terrible catastrophic consequences. There will be numerous unintended consequences that will not only harm humans, but also Nile crocodiles, salties, and plenty of other animals. The main problem could be a war between the Nile crocodiles, who are residents, and the newcomers, saltwater crocodiles. To find out what would happen in such a confrontation, we will start with the comparison of the two duelists. The adult Nile croc grows to be 7.9 to 14 feet long, while the salty grows between 7.5 and 17 feet long. In general, the salty is the larger and heavier crocodile, and size and weight do matter in a championship fight between two behemoths. There will undoubtedly be blood, as both crocodile species are known to be terrifyingly aggressive. Individual results will depend on who's the bigger crocodile, but all things being equal, the advantage is on the salty side. So, if things go according to plan without human interference, eventually, the saltwater crocodile will win the war and supplant the Nile crocodile in Africa. However, it's not going to be an easy victory. The salties will suffer a substantial loss, even if they do eventually win. While the war situation is more likely, there is also the possibility of an uneasy sort of peace. Perhaps the Nile crocs and the salties will find a way to peacefully coexist and end up creating a hybrid crocodilian. This new hybrid could eventually take over the waterways and perhaps supplant both the Nile croc and the salty. This will then lead to a situation wherein humans will need to get involved as the hybrid is probably going to be more aggressive than both the Nile and the Salty. However, if Africa would have two distinct aggressive crocodilian species, you can bet that the number of human fatalities would skyrocket. So, a likely effect of that would be that various African governments across the continent would then introduce bounties and eradicate both crocodilian species. Furthermore, Introducing salties into the mix will have a significant negative impact on the other African species of animals in the area, as many of them are likely aware of the Nile crocs and may have an uneasy awareness and acceptance of them. Most animals will be unable to cope with the more aggressive salty. Only the hippo can really keep the salties at bay, so probably only the adult hippo will be relatively unaffected. Like most cases where humans introduce non-native species to an area, there is a real potential for danger, especially when apex predators are introduced to new areas. While we can only speculate as to what the likely consequences will be, one thing is indisputable. The aftermath will be harmful to humans and other animals. Now that you've heard our opinion, we want to know yours. What do you think would happen if saltwater crocodiles were relocated to the Nile River? We're waiting for your answers in the comments. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.